Gentlemen, let's start this one off with a question. So you've got $1,000 and you've got two options. One, you can spend it on your formal education. So if you're a doctor, a lawyer, accountant, IT professional, you can spend this money to further your education in your field. Or you can take this money and you can spend it on your image. You can invest in a course. You can buy a book. You can go out there and spend this money on clothing, do a combination. Basically, you're spending this money on your image. So where do you think most people are going to opt to spend this money? Let me know in the comments. What do you think? Where are most, if you were to talk to most people, where are they going to advise you to spend this money? I think the majority of people are going to advise you to spend it on your formal education and why not? You've already spent a lot of money there. We're, we live in a society that says you can never go wrong spending money on education, you know, learn for learning's sake. There are a lot of myths out there when it comes to the importance of education versus the importance of presentation. I am a big believer in education. I've got an MBA. I've got a great undergraduate education. I went to a good public school. All of these things I think have made me who I am. Education is important. I'm not going to downplay it. But I will say that we live in a society that puts out a lot of myths when it comes to presentation. We try to downplay it. We try to say it's not important when it is. Because when you shake somebody's hand, what, you think they're going to see that degree? Do they see all those certificates? No. They look at you. They make a quick judgment, guys, and it is important. So let me go ahead. I'm going to get into the five myths and go check out the article, guys. I give you all the research. I go into all the details in the article. You can learn more there, but let's get into those five myths. So myth number one, your image is not as important as your education. Guys, I've already said I am a big believer in education. However, I do not believe that you should continue to educate yourself and educate yourself to the detriment of your presentation and your image. Guys, it, they're both incredibly important. Spend some time and effort up your image. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter if you're a doctor. Doesn't matter if you're an accountant. Doesn't matter if you're an IT guy. Your image is going to help you to come off not only as more competent, but more trustworthy. And why does that matter? So the research coming out of Harvard, Amy Cuddy provided this stuff. She said there were two things people use to make a determination. Are they going to do, are they going to do business with you? Are they going to loan you money? Basically, can they trust you and are you competent? I feel many of you guys already have the competency thing down. You're, you know, you're great when it comes to the law. You went to one of the top law schools. Great, you've got your competency. But if I don't trust you, and this is, you know, Amy Cuddy, she showed, you know, competency actually is behind trust. Trust is more important. So if you betray my expectations and you don't look like that successful lawyer you're charging or that you say you are, all of that stuff is going to fall through. So, guys, I'm not going to say one is better than the other. I am going to say they work together. So why would you hold yourself back? Why would you hamper yourself by not paying attention to image? Myth number two, your image is not as important as what comes out of your mouth. So people think that when we're talking, when we're engaging, that people are actually listening to us. And that may be true in a podcast, on a radio show. But most of the time, people are picking up on body language. They're picking up on how we move, how we present ourselves. There was a European study. It had an artist go out there for a musical performance and he was either dressed well that went along with what he was expected to play or he betrayed the audience's expectations. He was dressed, he just had a very bad presentation. Even the way he went out was he, the way he walked. Everything made it so that the audience wasn't going to like him. Both of them played the exact same music. So you would think, okay, you know, we're here to listen to the music. Who cares how he walked on the stage, how he looked, how he presented himself? What they found is if they betrayed expectations, it didn't matter how good they are. If it was the exact same music, which they actually they played, there was no difference in this music. People again and again, they marked lower the person that had a very bad presentation. Basically, what we have when first impressions are formed, they are very difficult to overcome. So understand that your image is very important, almost more important than what you say. Myth number three, our image does not affect our performance. Come on, you're in companies and you see casual Friday. You're at a, maybe a startup and nobody cares how anybody dresses. Does it actually have an effect? 
It depends. So there's this whole field of enclosed cognition. Over at Northwestern University, they did a study and they had people wear what they thought were to be doctor jackets or painter smocks. Depending on what they thought they were wearing, if they were wearing a doctor's jacket, they performed statistically higher on their, it basically they took an exam. If they were wearing the painter smock, no noticeable difference. The point is when people wore something they felt made them smarter, made them more confident, they actually performed better. So I'm not going to say in that startup that you need to have guys dress better. But what I am going to say is encourage people to dress in a manner that best suits their individual style. Most people will say when I talk to them about style, they're like, oh, you know, I'm a t-shirt and jeans kind of guy or, you know, the way I dress, that's just my style. I don't, I don't believe that. I think most people have never even thought about how they want to present themselves to the world. And if you take the time to figure out what you stand for, who you are, what you dress for, then all of a sudden you may, you know, I've got three daughters. I want to dress, I want to dress like the man that I want them to someday meet and decide to meet. I want to set the example. I want my wife to be attracted to me. You know, we've been together 20 years and I want to dress in a manner that when she looks at me, she's proud that she's married to me. Understand, gentlemen, that the way we perform oftentimes is tied to the way that we present ourselves. So myth number four is that your presentation, your image does not communicate anything about your personality. So they did this research over in Europe and what they found is that when doctors dressed better. Now they knew that doctors were going to be perceived as more competent. There's a lot of research out there that shows the white jacket, doctors dressing more professionally, wearing a tie. They're actually going to be perceived as more competent. People are going to, you know, have all of these feelings that, okay, he is a doctor. He looks like a doctor. He basically falls into their expectations. But what they didn't expect was to actually find that, wow, people felt he was more open. People felt that they could talk to him more. So this is one study. And again, I'm going to link to it over in the article. But guys, the point is when you dress oftentimes better, you're going to come off as someone that people feel he's going to be more likely to answer and be open to my question. So have you ever noticed, and I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment, when you dress sharp, people actually think you're working at a place. People think that you may know where you're going. They stop you and ask for directions. You know, it is partly because of your personality as perceived by them. So I'm not going to say that, you know, if you wear a bow tie that you're a more, you know, you're a happier person. But what I will say is that you will be perceived as such. And therefore, if you understand that and it's important to you, guys, just don't neglect it and understand that it's a myth that your image isn't somehow conveying what your personality is. Let's wrap this up with myth number five. That is improving your image is difficult. What most people mean is that it's expensive and it's going to take a lot of time. I think that's relative because if you think about how much money you're going to lose in your lifetime if you don't care about this or how much you can actually learn just investing 15 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day into learning about men's style. All of a sudden you're going to find, you know, it's actually not that difficult. Again, the key is to have an emotional component to start this change. If you understand what you stand for and why you want to improve yourself, all of a sudden it's going to become easy. It's kind of like feeding yourself. If you are hungry, you're going to find a way to, to feed yourself. If you really want something, if it is really important to you, you're not going to say, I don't have time. You need to make style a priority, number one, because you need to understand how it's going to make your life better by improving how much money you make, by improving your relationships, by all of a sudden you're more confident and you're feeling better about yourself. When you realize that these are things that you can easily do and getting back to that first thousand dollars, if you could say, you know, I can spend a thousand dollars and all of a sudden I can improve my life, be more attractive, actually feel better about myself, all of a sudden it starts making sense and you start to make it a priority. All right, gents, that's it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Which of these myths do you agree is just all over the place and basically needs to be put to rest? And if you want more, I've got a free course for you. Go check it out right here. In this free course, I'm going to give you the foundations of men's style so today you can start to dress better, dress with more confidence and to have the basic foundations so that you can be the man you know yourself to be. Take care, gents. See you in the next video.